Hello, all my beautiful people. Welcome back to Sarah J. Awesome. A couple things that we need to get out of the way before I start this video. Number one, if this is your first time stopping by this channel, please do not judge me on just this video. I am super, super sick right now, and I'm exhausted and delirious and completely out of my mind. Um, so please forgive me for this video, but the show must go on. Oh, also, I'm sucking on a cough drop so that I'm not hacking my lungs up right now doing this video. Number two, my last video that I released, I made because of this road trip video, and that was a lot of ways that you can save range when you are really, really desperate. Now, in that video, I talked about something that I called shake and bake, but really it's drafting or slipstreaming. Long story short, I was just so in love with the physics of it and the science behind it, and I just thought it was really cool, and I completely forgot to mention details, and I made an assumption, assuming things... <laughs> makes an ass out of you and it makes an ass out of me and apparently that is what I did but I want to be very very clear on something that is the only time that I have ever done this and driven behind a large truck to get range I normally stay really far away from those trucks it is very dangerous I only suggest that you do this if you are using your own judgment and you feel like it's a safe situation and you're not putting yourself in danger or anyone else around you in danger and it says that you're going to arrive at your destination with 2% battery or less, then okay, yeah, feel free to do this. I am not talking about freaking tailing 18 wheelers all the time. That is stupid, it's dangerous, and it's disrespectful to them. When you are traveling behind an 18 wheeler like that, you can't see around them. And obviously for an 18 wheeler, if they see some debris in the road or something, they are not going to swerve to try to miss it because they might hit some car next to them. They may flip their whole rig over. Uh, it can be a really bad situation. It's easy for those trucks to just run over, say a tire in the middle of the road, but it's not easy for you to run over a tire with your Tesla. Obviously use your own judgment here and be courteous to the truck drivers. Literally everything that you own and everything that you eat came to you in some way by a truck driver. They are exhausted. They drive for hours and hours and hours in dangerous conditions. It's scary for them to have a car directly behind them, especially if they can't see you. So if you're using this method, make sure that you can see the driver of the truck in their mirror. And if you can't see them in their mirror, then they can't see you and it will freak them out. And you don't wanna be doing that. That's not fair to the truck driver. Also, whenever you decide to leave that truck and you know, be on your way or finds another truck to follow or something, you can say thank you to them by doing a slow push on your brights uh, two times in a row. So basically thank you. And if you have a passenger or if you can do it safely, give them like a friendly wave and a smile or something like that. <sighs> Please don't be stupid. That was my only time doing that. And hopefully it is the last time that I will ever do that. Now we can move on with the video. I recently went on a road trip to go visit some family. And normally when I take this road trip, I can go straight there and straight back and arrive back home with 9% battery when I charge to 100%. I do always charge to 100% for that trip. There's not a lot of superchargers on the way to this location. In previous trips, when I have done that, it was only me in the car. I had um, no cargo. I also did it in perfect weather conditions, about 70 to 74 degrees Fahrenheit. So I was not using climate at all. I had it completely turned off and the car wasn't heating or cooling the battery. Now, this recent trip that I took, I had my kids in the car with me and we had a lot of things working against us. So let me just explain what happened in this trip. I'm going to explain it first on paper to you, and then I'm going to show you the video of the actual drive when it was happening. I basically almost did not make it to the supercharger. Um, please, please don't freak out. <laughs> It'll be okay. All right. This is just kind of like a lesson for you to learn and things for you to consider so that you don't end up in the same situation and do all those stupid things that I did at the start of my trip. All right, so I wanna point out that this is the 2020 Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. It is rated by Tesla to have 240 miles of range. I have never actually gotten 240 miles of range, ever. And that's because I live in Texas, everything is really far away, and I only drive on the freeway, so I drive at high speeds. And you will lose more battery in the cold. My car was the last one made that does not have the heat pump, so I don't have that extra energy from that. My heater is very inefficient and it sucks a lot of battery out. 
um, because it uses basically uh, electric heating coil instead of um, compressing and expanding gas, which is a little more energy efficient. The heat pump is newer and gives you a few more miles of range in cold weather. Mine is the older one and does not have the heat pump. I did do a cold range weather test uh, last year and I did an experiment and I calculated that from 100% battery down to 0% battery, driving at 70 miles per hour in 31 degree Fahrenheit weather, I could only get 186 miles out of my battery. That is from 100% to completely freaking dead. And that's fine. I mean, I get it. They do this with gas cars too. They say you're going to get this much, you know, miles per gallon and it's complete BS depending on the situation. Here we are uh, a year and a half later and I'm having range anxiety again for this trip. All right. So let's take a look here. I know this is probably like totally Greek to you. Don't look at this. This is just for my eyeballs to explain to you. All right. So let's take a look at our options here. Now this is home. This is Livingston. And ideally, we'd like to go from point A to point B back to point C. Now, from point A to point B, it is 86 miles, and I will use 45% battery. And it will take us an hour and 30 minutes to get there. <clears throat> now, if we turn around and we come back like I normally do, I normally take this route back, and I end up home with 9% battery. So round trip, it would be... 172 miles, I would use 90% battery and it would take me three hours. However, we're not going to make it back <laughs> because we have a lot of factors working against us on this trip. This is not the same because I have a lot more people in the car, I have bad weather, I left with not 100% battery, etc, etc. This is not an option to come back this way. And we're also not going to make it to this supercharger over here. So that's not an option either. So we have two options left now. Our first option is we can go from Livingston to Huntsville to a supercharger, and then we can go to from Huntsville to home. So if we take this direction like this, then that is 43 miles, and we will arrive with 18% battery. It will take us an hour to get there. It'll take us 55 minutes, and we'll have to charge for 30 minutes once we get there. Then we can go from Huntsville to home like this, actually this way, because there's a lot of traffic in here and we don't want to deal with that. 90 miles to go this route, and this would take us an hour and 35 minutes. So in total, this first option would take us 133 miles, and it would take us three hours to get home, including the supercharging. And originally, if we were able to come straight back home, it would only take us an hour and 30 minutes to get back home. So that really, really sucks. That adds an hour and a half extra to our time. And also, instead of it taking us 86 miles to get back home, it would take us 133 miles. Option number two, because that option freaking sucks. I don't want it to take me three hours with a car full of kids to get home. Plus, in this area, we have the storm working against us. It's a lot colder up here, and we have the wind blowing into the front of the car. So our plan B, our second option, to go from point um, B to C, which is Livingston to North Houston Supercharger, that would take us... 69 miles and we would arrive here with 2% battery approximately and it would take us an hour to get there and then 30 minutes to charge. So that's an hour and 30 minutes plus when we're done charging then we have to drive another 37 miles home and that will take us 47 minutes. So this plan B trip will take a total of 106 miles and it would take us 2 hours and 17 minutes. So I decided to chance it and go from Livingston to the North Houston Supercharger, arrive with 2% battery, and then head home. So I had to really change energy usage from Livingston to the Supercharger because that 2% really scared me. That is the lowest percentage that I've ever seen for my destination. I normally drive by myself and, you know, I had to consider that extra 640 pounds that I had in the car and plus weather conditions and all that and the heater and everything. So, but after I did these 11 things, um, I actually ended up at the supercharger with 8% instead of 2%. So I was able to give myself 6% range, which is quite a bit. If you end up running out of battery and you can't make it to a supercharger, there are some options. There's 
there's two apps that you can download. There's PlugShare and there's the Volta app. And both those apps kind of show you other chargers that are not Tesla superchargers, but they are ones that if you have your adapter, you can charge. They are slower rates of charging. Or your other option is to have someone tow you to a supercharger. And that's definitely not something that I wanted to do. Let's go take a look at that video now. Okay, so we have a little bit of a problem here. Normally I can make that trip, but I left my house with 96% um, battery instead of 100%. And then we got a huge cold front that came through. So it actually had told me to go to Huntsville to go charge up here, but that's an hour out of the way from Livingston and an hour out of the way from going home. So we're trying to make it back to this Houston supercharger right here. And originally it said I would arrive here with 2% battery if I stayed under 60 miles per hour, which the average speed is actually 65 miles per hour and 70 miles per hour on this freeway here. So it is 48 degrees outside right now. Um, I do have the aerodynamic hubcaps on. I did put the car in chill mode, chill right here. And another thing that I did I don't want to be using the AC or the heater or the seat warmers, but my windows started fogging up because we have four people in this car and it's cold outside and warm in here from all of our mouth breathing. What I did to keep the window from fogging up is I put it on the upper windshield vent up here and I have it on one fan. I turned off recirculating air because I wanted to bring in that cold, dry air from outside so the window doesn't get foggy. And I'm not using the defogger or defroster because those put the fan on high um, and they turn on the AC or the heater. So I turned off the AC, turned off recirculating air, I have it on the windshield vent, level one fan. That is actually doing a really great job of keeping the windshield from um, fogging up. And another thing we have going for us is I do have it on autopilot because I do have a lead foot. So instead of me forgetting and accelerating with traffic, this will make sure that we're using the minimal amount of energy. We are going to do exactly the speed limit the entire way <clears throat> or under. Another thing that we have going for us is we've gotten behind this 18 wheeler in front of us here and we are going to adjust our car link to one car link. So we're gonna stay super close behind the 18 wheeler. And luckily we have the wind behind us today instead of blowing against us. So that will help significantly as well. And one more thing I wanna show you is if you go to your energy here, what we're gonna do is, this is the average of the last part of the road that we just drove. I'm putting it on five miles because we just drove through town and I don't want it to take into account how slow we were driving in town. I want it to only take into account in my algorithm for how much energy we have left, um, the freeway. And we have been on the freeway for five miles now. So if we have put it on average range right here, this is our projected range that we have left according to this algorithm. So if you have been driving for um, a long time on the freeway and it all was using the same kind of variables that you want to use in your projected range, then you could put it on 30 miles and that would be more accurate. But like I said, for me, I just drove through town. So five miles is actually going to be more accurate for me because the rest of my trip will be on the freeway. So I need it to take into account the speed that I'm traveling right now in my energy usage. It says that we have 72 miles projected range here and that does, um, that is pretty close to our 73 miles of range we have here. So 32% battery and 73 miles of range and that's really good because we actually have 47 miles to go. So doing all these things that I did to stop consuming energy quickly um, has helped significantly because when I left our last place in Livingston, it said I would arrive with 2% battery. And then once I shut down all of these things that were taking a lot of energy and got behind that 18 wheeler and everything else, um, it's now showing that we're gonna arrive with 7%. Another thing we didn't have the radio on, but now that we're gonna arrive with 7%, I'm gonna go ahead and crank up the stereo. Okay, so this is where we're at right here, and we're going to come over here to come charge. But ultimately, we actually need to be going um, east and then south to get to our final destination. So this whole section right here uh, is completely out of the way, backtracking, so that we can just charge enough to get to our destination. But luckily, we won't have to charge very long, probably less than 20 minutes, so it's not really that painful. 
so we did make it. We made it with 8% battery. We just plugged the car in, which is amazing. So we're gonna charge for about 20 minutes here and then we'll get back on the road and head to our final destination. I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope it was kind of easy to understand. Um, I know it's definitely hard if you don't have an EV yet and you're like, oh my God, what is all the stuff she's talking about? But um, basically these are 11 things that I did that was able to save me 6% battery and I was able to make it. So these are things that you should really keep in the back of your head if you get into a situation like this. And this doesn't normally happen, so don't freak out. Oh my God, I, I've only um, come this close to running out of battery this one time. And, you know, normally I drive like 110 miles a day and I've never had a problem where I was like, you know, going to run out of battery. This is the only time. And it's just because this rural location, there's just not a lot of superchargers up there, but they're making more superchargers all the time. Don't think that this is some kind of scary situation that you're going to be in all the time. It's not going to happen like that. But this is like the worst of the worst situation that I've ever been in. Let me know what you think about this video. Hopefully it wasn't too terrible because like I said, I'm super sick right now <laughs> and just like completely out of it. But um, I hope everyone has a wonderful week and um, I'll see you next time.